Hi everyone, today I am going to show you how to A, make a split tux bow so you've got um, colour one side and a plain the other or any other combination that you like and also how to add transfers and I've got two different types I've got a vinyl version which is like this and I've got a sublimination version which is more like this one so what you will need is some hair straighteners to um, heat seal the vinyl and the sublimation to the bow, your glue gun, your lighter to heat seal all your ends, fabric scissors to cut your ribbon, tape measure to measure everything, some um, dress pins to hold everything in place, and your needle an extra strength thread, like I said you can use poor friend, extra strength thread or upholstery thread whichever is best for you but don't use cotton because it will snap on the side and an alligator clip to attach your bow on okay Put this out of the way and as you can see this shiny holographic one it's kind of hard to see on camera a little bit that is a vinyl transfer and this one on the paper this is a sublim sublimination uh, heat transfer and they're slightly different um, with the um, sublimation ones you can get more detailed designs um, like I said you can do different things uh, for these ones again you can do quite a lot of different versions and things like that but these are ones for your hollow ones you can get your shiny versions your matte versions and things like this and I do know because my sister has a Cricut machine she makes her own for, for me um, using the design studio when printing on it all, all the different materials that you can cut with the Cricut machine but like I said I know sublimination is slightly harder to do but it is worth it if you're interested in that kind of thing um, you can also purchase them from from lots of different suppliers they all have different designs different letterings and different combinations that they can offer so do have a look at that because like I said they're not very expensive and they can completely change the look of your bow like I said just gives it a little pop again it's not very clear to see that but that says mermaid squad and it's actually got a little Let's see if we can get it close enough for you see it's got a little mermaid tail flick and a little star on the mermaid squad like I said you can get all different combinations and that one's obviously my niece because they're twins even though um, Ella's a brunette and Liz is a blonde um, because of the same height and uh, twins everybody seems to think they're identical even though they have completely different hair colours completely different eye shapes and completely different noses so we have to put them sometimes in uh, name bows just so people can tell them apart even their personalities are completely different to be honest as you can see I've got some silver to go with that nice snowflake and I've got a nice teal to go with that little Miss Sassy so I'll do the oh I've got one last thing Again, when you're purchasing these from uh, your suppliers, quite a few of them will also offer this transfer tape. Now, some people can do it freehand and hold them in place and heat, heat them at the same time. But when I do this, I quite often slip and you do not want your, your letters to slip, uh, especially on these ones, because you will get one key. Uh, ones and ones where they've sort of gone all messed up and blurred and um, they get blurred and things like that, which is not... The best for anyone um, so I'll show you how to use this high transfer tape and normally you can get it for about one pound fifty two pound um, it's about 25 meters of roll it lasts absolutely forever because you only need the tiniest bit to hold your transfers in place um, but like I said it is very very useful especially like I said if you're a little bit a little bit clumsy like myself so we've got the silver version and I use two six and a half inch pieces, so it's just going to be under 12 inches the bow in length when we join them. And all I do is I do about a half a centimetre overlay like that. 
and pin. And I always heat my CMR transfers on first before I build the whole bow because I like to be certain of where the transfer is going to be. And also you can decide which way because obviously you could do it depending on which side you want it, your transfer to be on. So like I said, you can have your transfer that side or you can turn it and have it that side and that will depend on where we lay the transfer to get it in the right place. So I always do that so I know how much space I've got here basically just to see where I need to put the transfer so it's not going to get squished in the creasing. And what I do, let's cut this down a little bit. If you want as little of that white as you can so you can see how much space you need for the transfer. So just trim that down a little bit so there's a lot less white as you can see. What I do is you want it quite close to the edge but not too close because we don't want it to go into this pinch too much because obviously it will ruin the effect of the transfer so like I said you want it quite close to that edge as you can without going around the corner this is why I do the fold before I and to test before I start playing around and actually put it on now you want a little bit of tape like so Teeny bit of transfer tape. And I did heat seal all my edges. And as this is white, I will show you when you're doing it, you want it in that blue part of the flame. Because, let me show you. On. I'm waiting for that to heat. Okay, so if you do that, what you can get is like there's like a little yellow, looks like an oil like stain, and that's what happens when you use the yellow part of the frame the flame instead of the blue so the blue you get nice clean edges heat sealed you don't get things like this like i said you don't get the burning you don't get the oversealing you don't get like the yellowy oily kind of stains that you can get okay so that's my trick for today like i said and now they're hot, they're all heated up. Do lift it up, make sure you've covered your whole transfer. And you just want to hold that in place for 15 to 30 seconds, depending on what your instructions say. These ones say 30 seconds. Um, different suppliers will advise different things because all of these, like I said, this is a sublimination, the other one's vinyl. They all have slightly different techniques and lengths of times and things like that and the supplier will know best for what to use for the material so if they've given you instructions follow them okay i'll just give that a little run over like so and then you can lift this up You see how pretty is that and then what I do is finish folding that there that to that side same amount all over take that pin there and pin through all four layers like so see I'll mark, I'll sort that in a minute. And then I have got my thread all tied off. 
and you want to be making sure you're going through all your layers so one two three four we start from above i'll just find the center of that as well so there's the center so from above one two three four five six seven i've just miscounted ignore me so from above one two three four five six so in one two out and you want to check this side as well one, two, three, and make sure you've caught all of those layers when you're going through. And make sure your three creases are in. And wrap. at least round twice and then stitch off in back as normal now never do more than a half centimeter when you're doing your overlap for your fold and I'll show you why in just a second So now obviously with this one, you can have it this way, so the grey is that side, or you can have it this way, so yeah, like this. I must have probably done with blue, I didn't realise how blue that one actually looked. So, when you wrap in your middle, you don't want to see any of that white, so you don't want it there, because we don't want to see that overlap. So this is the other reason why it's important to make sure your bows are centred when you're wrapping your middle. Okay, so let's put our clip on. And I want just a spot of glue just here. And then I'll show you how to do the vinyl version. Like it's almost exactly the same. You just have to be gentler with the lifting because like I said, you don't want any of your letters to lift or any of your edges to come up with the transfer. Hold that a second. Heat seal the end. Just a touch there. Open the clip. Make sure we're covering that white. And once. And twice. And cut off that excess, like so. Heat seal there. A little bit of glue. And there's your sublimination transfer. Okay, we're going to do almost exactly the same thing with this one. Just going to trim that down because that's not quite straight. So, 
just slightly over. As you can see, just the teeniest, tiniest bit. And then we're going to fold that in. And that in. So we work out where we can put this transfer. Like so. So as you can see, we've got this bit of space here. We know the pinches are going to come to about here at least. So we want to have this little Miss Sassy at least here so it's not in the pinches and we'll be able to see it clearly on the bow now with this one it's got a little bit of clear on the back and that is to stop the stickiness of these getting like little bits of fluff and uh, particles in them because it will stop it from sticking on the bow as well so don't take that off until you're actually ready to attach it to your bow that's what that protection there is for so you can pop them there now some versions of this vinyl will be a little bit sticky by themselves and you won't need the transfer tape as much but quite a few of them aren't so like i said this is why this comes in useful and again tape it where it's going to go so it's not going to slip your words aren't going to go cockeyed or skew -if. There we go, that's ready, move this one out of the way, and again make sure with this that you cover in the whole transfers, most of them are small enough that this size uh, paddle is quite good and you can pick up these, kind. these are my old GHDs that I cleaned before I started using and sterilised, but you can pick up a pair for about six ninety nine, eight ninety nine, 8 and they're a lot cheaper than buying like the mini heat pressers and um, mini irons and things like that and they work just as well for adding creases into your ribbon and doing these kind of transfers and also most of you will probably already have an old pair that you've got stuffed in a drawer somewhere that you can give a clean and wipe down uh, without buying anything else which is always a, a plus in my eyes like i said about 30 seconds on them turn them off with these ah, as you can see those two letters didn't quite come there just give that a little smooth like that this is the other advantage of having the tape in place because they'll still sit exactly where they should Now with these, I like to peel them down, like so, because I find it keeps the um, letters from lifting too much, um, unlike those little T's did to begin with, because if you do it that way sometimes, some of them start lifting, lifting up. There you go, so that's in place. Look how pretty that is. This one will be for Lizzie. She is the sassier of the personalities. Ella's a little bit more antisocial, like myself. Lizzie's very, very friendly and outgoing. She likes to hug every single person that she's ever met in her life. Whereas I'm one of the please get out of my personal space right now types. Like I said, do your little overlap. Repin through all your layers. I'm just going to adjust that slightly because that's gone not quite enough. There you go, that's better. Bit 
thinner so we've got all all the layers there I'm just going to heat seal that little tray there so there's that one just going to tie up my thread it's my other favourite thing to do not tie it off before I start stitching and then have to start everything again so again exactly the same as normal on these from above one two three four five So in, one, two, out. I'm just going to do those last ones just a little bit more even. The more even that you can get these, the better your overall tuxes will look. Okay. Underdid it and overdid it. Okay, that's better. Like I said, in, one, two, out. One, two, three. And then we can pull. Get our nice three creases. And wrap. And stitch off in back. However, you like to. Off your thread. Sassy with the lovely matching teal to match that nice shiny holograph. And I've got the matching middle here. And like I said, when you're doing heat transfers especially, whichever bow you put them on, it's always worth half building your bow before you start stitching and things like that and if you're not going to put them on like I had before you start um, actually sewing the bow together work out exactly where you need to put it and put like a little mark or a little dot or a um, little marker or something that you are that you're going to be able to cover that you know exactly where it is when you're going to build it in um, so that you can get it in the right place and not have it like I said sat in those that area or too far over to one side or something like that when you do it like I said um because you don't want to have it if we'd have done that in the wrong place that would be there it would be all scrunched scrunched together and you would have something that looks more like this instead of your nice and easy to read version like so that's why I do it the way that I do it so heat seal that end a bit of glue and again we want to be making sure that we're not got any of that middle white showing either side around twice The excess. Heat seal that. And the better you get at building these kind of bows and things like that, the better you'll get at working out where to do your placements on these. But like I said, 
how cute are these? So we've got Little Miss Sassy. We've got a nice snowflake. Mermaid Squad. And Emma. Okay, thanks for watching. Bye. Thanks for watching. Please uh, remember to um, share, like, subscribe, and don't forget to ring the uh, bell icon, um, this little one, um, to be notified of when I release new videos, because I always release them every Tuesday and Friday. And also, don't forget to follow me on Facebook under the same name, Catherine's Ruben Bows Tutorials and Follow Alongs, because um, I can give you more help if you need anything or any further information. And I love it when you've all put pictures up of your own versions of me that I've sort of taught you from my tutorials I love seeing that so thank you for watching again thanks bye